Well, the USFL wraps up the regular season this weekend, and the Birmingham Stallions have won all but one game so far, and they're headed to the playoffs. Joining us now to talk about the USFL's incredible comeback and the Stallions, the head coach. So good to see you, Coach Skip Holtz. It's great to be here. Thank yeah, you, Andrew. Thank you. I, I love your personality. I know you're going to answer all my questions to the best of your ability because you're that doubt. kind of guy. Without a doubt. Definitely. You're, you, you're, you're, you're going to grill me here. I'm this about to. Be, Are you okay, ready? I'm ready. So back in 19 and no. <laughs> um, your expectations coming into this league and with this team, what were they? No idea. No idea what to expect. I know that you know in February we didn't even have a team, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you draft 45 players and you bring them together, and we practice for three weeks. We went into the first game, and you have no idea what you have. You haven't seen your players tackle live. You haven't seen them get hit. You have no how they're going to gel. How are they going to come together? This is different than anything I've ever done because in college ball you have from January all the way to August to put your team together. Here you had three weeks, and so no idea what to expect. But really proud of the way these guys have really come together. The way that they've gelled. I think the assistant coaches have done a great job of putting the staff together and this team together, and it's it's really been it's been a lot of fun to watch it materialize and grow as the season has gone on. So your dad is a very famous coach as well, Lou Holtz. You grew up around college ball. You coached yes. um, several different teams: South Florida, East Carolina, Louisiana Tech. Then you come into this new league with a bunch of new rules. Yep. How was that? I mean, and, and in a short amount of time to learn all of it. I have I've loved the new rules. I think it makes the game more exciting. Uh, you're never out of it. You know, one of the things, in, like in basketball, you can be down 10 with two minutes to go and come back with a couple three-pointers. In football, when you were down 10, two scores, your probability of getting an onside kick was very small. And so you needed a lot of time on the clock. With what they've done now, two-point play, three-point play, going forward on fourth down. Instead of the onside kick, you can keep, keep your offense on the field. A lot of rule changes, a lot of excitement, but it certainly keeps you on your toes because you got to start to think Think about it a whole lot different now as you're managing the end of the game. And when you look at this league, they've done a great job of really dispersing the talent uh, through the draft process. And so when you look at it, I believe through nine weeks now, there's only been six games, maybe seven, that have been more than a one score game. So very close football games, and it's made for very entertaining football to watch for sure. What about the bubble? Was that weird, or does it make your team more focused? And then they get to know all the other teams. Like, I, that's just an odd setup. Isn't I think it? it's where it's really cool is when the game's over. Because these guys have been living together for nine weeks now, or really about three months they've been living together with camp and the season so far. So when the game ends, it's like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah, I, I eat lunch with that guy, eat breakfast with him. Uh, they interact with each other. I think the bubble's been a, a great idea. I think it's been unique, but it's been really cool and something that I've loved, the experience and the exposure, because it's not just your team. The day-to-day -day of just your 50 players, your 10 coaches, but I had breakfast this morning with Larry Fedora. You know, you go down there and you sit down, and he's the guy that we're going to play when we go to Canton, and I had breakfast mm -hmm. with him. So it's really the camaraderie of the league has really been a neat thing to be part of. And we, uh, as folks in and around Birmingham, love it as well. We love the concept. What about next year or next season? Is it all Birmingham, or well, what, what happens? Right now, I mean, I don't. Those as far as are, you know. As far as I know. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to call me and say, hey, Coach, what do you think <laughs> we should do? Uh, but I, I think there will certainly be some form of hub. There's a lot of conversation. Do you, do you break into two hubs? Mm -hmm. Do you have a northern and southern division? But I think what this has done for to eliminate travel, Birmingham is a great city, and the amount of the, the restaurants, the people, it's a football state. Uh, people are football crazy in this state. Oh, yeah. they, they absolutely love it. There's no professional sports in here. And to have all these games right here in Birmingham has been awesome. But I think the city has really embraced it, and that's part of why it's worked. You're about to go on your first away game. I know you're excited yes, about that, I, aren't you? I, I am excited. And when we you know, we went through and we won the first seven, and that gave us the opportunity to clinch the berth into Canton, and then to win the eighth in a row, and to guarantee we won the South Division, yeah. which is pretty cool. And then to play these last two games just to get ready to go to Canton, it's going to be a great experience. Coach, great to meet you. Thanks for being here it's with us. It's very nice to meet you as well. I appreciate you having me this morning. Go Stallions. We'll be right back here on the CBS 42 Morning News.